just like a playground has rules the universe follows the laws of physics. Humans are innately curious and we often get bored with familiar games. To discover new horizon we must understand the very fabric of existence space-time and the laws that define how everything in this mysterious universe behaves. We know objects can move through space but as they do they also journey through the ever-present dimension of time. Everything works quite intuitively when things travel slowly. It's only when an object approaches the speed of light that strange phenomena start to happen. Would you be able to see your reflection in a mirror while traveling at the speed of light? How could the universe rewrite events if you were to go back in time and try changing them and watch the solution to the grandfather paradox? In our vast universe the speed of light serves as a fundamental limit for how quickly anything can move or any process can occur. Even on a tiny molecular level information is transmitted at the speed of light. But we still haven't measured it directly we only have data on the two-way trip which involves bouncing light off a mirror to calculate its round-trip time. So it's just an assumption that the speed of light is constant in both directions. But what if it's not? One day an important message is sent from Earth to the first Mars settlers. The message reads this signal was sent at midnight adjust your clocks accordingly. We know the speed of light takes 24 minutes to reach Mars and return to Earth. The Mars settlers assume that the one-way speed of light is exactly half the round-trip speed and adjust their clocks to 12 minutes past midnight upon receiving the message. But in this scenario light traveled at only 50% of its usual velocity to Mars so it took 24 minutes to reach the red planet. Unaware of the discrepancy the Mars settlers respond clock-adjusted message sent at 12 minutes past midnight. Meanwhile, the signal on its way back to Earth travels instantaneously. The Earth clock now shows 24 minutes past 12 when scientists receive the message. They assume it took 12 minutes for the Martian signal to arrive so they think everything went well even though there's a 12-minute time difference. So you can see by this example that understanding the speed of light is crucial to unlocking the enigmatic nature of time. But what exactly is time and how do we define it when we think of time we imagine the changing of the seasons or say it is a handy tool that helps us agree on when and where we're going to meet someone. Although that ticking clock is just another representation of movement the movement of our planet around the sun to be precise the problem is moving through space and time doesn't seem to be governed by the same rules. There's a limit on how fast you can go in three dimensions of space and that's 186,282 miles per second. But is there such a boundary for how fast or slow time can progress? The Earth orbits the Sun relatively slowly yet even here on our planet there's no universal clock we can all use as a common reference. Time seems to flow differently for all of us something Einstein's theory of general relativity predicted. To notice just how weird this connection between speed and time is you need to watch things that move extremely fast. It's only then that remarkable paradoxes start to reveal themselves. The faster an object ventures through space the more it slows its progression through the fabric of time a phenomenon known as relativistic time dilation. So what happens if you travel at the maximum speed? Photons don't have any mass so they always move at exactly the speed of light not slower not faster and so time doesn't exist for them. Their journey is instantaneous even though from our perspective we notice how time goes by as they traverse space. How does this work? Consider a hypothetical scenario where a rocket travels at 99.99% the speed of light. A passenger on board that rocket throws a ball in the direction of the rocket's movement. The velocities of the rocket and the ball add up something we would expect from classical Newtonian physics. But if the passenger switched on a flashlight instead, the speed of light wouldn't gain any boost. Both the rocket crew and an observer standing on Earth would record the same speed for the flashlight beam, since this speed is constant and independent of the velocity of its source. But there's a problem, if the speed of light isn't changing, something else should time. Now picture this you're riding a futuristic motorcycle down an incredibly long incredibly empty road at the speed of light. You decide to look at your reflection in a side mirror but there's a catch. The mirror is also moving at the speed of light so how would the light reflecting off your face even catch up if you can see your reflection it would appear to someone watching you that the light bouncing off your face is moving faster than the speed of light which contradicts the laws of physics. However, no reflection would suggest that the speed of light is not constant. In this case someone standing beside the road would observe the light moving slower than you do unable to reach the mirror. 
to avoid these glitches in the matrix and ensure a consistent measurement of the speed of light for all observers the universe has come up with a few tricks. When an object approaches the speed of light not only does its time seem to slow down for us, but we also witness the object shrinking in length. Another visual distortion is when a moving object rotates itself something called the tail Penrose effect. Despite the common misconception it won't gain any additional mass rather it will gain kinetic energy. Yet the weirdest thing of all is that these changes would only be real to us. For a person traveling at a speed close to the speed of light everything would stay the same. They would feel motionless time would flow normally and their body would preserve its usual length. To the rocket's passenger what's outside the cabin window would seem to act weird and transform or distort. There's no definitive way to tell who's experiencing these strange almost mystical distortions. The absence of a shared objective frame of reference leaves us in a puzzling situation. Since motion is relative the distinction between who moves and who remains stationary becomes elusive. It's as if each of us wears a unique set of goggles offering a slightly different version of reality. Unlike optical illusions time dilation is a real and irreversible phenomenon. As the rocket slows down and comes to a halt the crew and an observer on Earth can finally compare their clocks and notice the difference. Time is a unidirectional flow pushing us forward. We've already discovered how to manipulate it to progress faster through time, but what about going against its natural course into the past if time passes by at its full rate when we're still and stops at exactly the speed of light it's only logical to assume that backward time travel would require reaching superluminal speeds. For all we know the speed of light is a unified speed limit both for moving through time and space. The only decision you have is how you distribute that amount of speed between these dimensions. Even today we can already look back in time. The light takes approximately 1.3 seconds to travel from the moon to our planet so every time we look at our satellite we see the way it was a little over a second ago. And if the distance is much greater than that we can observe a more distant past. So, let's imagine that one day, we could not only look back in time, but travel there without breaking the cosmic velocity boundary. Scientists have already suggested several hypotheses on how this can be done. One of these ideas is a megastructure called the Tipler Cylinder. An infinitely long tube with around 10 or more solar masses squeezed together and spinning several billion times per minute would be able to warp time around it. If in a very distant future we managed to build such a megastructure and flew around the cylinder in a strict spiral course along the direction of its rotation, we could essentially travel back in time. The closer our ship would get to the cylinder with the density that of a black hole the faster into the past we'd be able to move. Once we've calculated the time required to spend in this circular movement we'd simply have to shift the spacecraft away from the Tipler time machine. There's a possibility that contrary to our understanding time doesn't have a linear direction. If space and time are one there may be no difference between then and there or now and here. According to an idea known as the block universe theory or eternalism, time is akin to a block and every moment past, present and future exists on equal footing just like there is space outside of the visible universe even though we cannot reach it. If true the laws of physics in such a universe would allow for traveling into the past although we wouldn't be able to affect the chain of events as much as we'd like. If the future already exists, then all events are predetermined and inevitable, and people who live in this universe have no free will. Such a world would be full of causal loops. The causal loop creates a self-perpetuating closed cycle where events in the future influence events in the past and vice versa. One day, while visiting an old bookstore you discover a captivating notepad hidden amongst the shelves. It sparks your inspiration leading you to start writing. With time, you become a renowned author and you decide to create a book. As you walk home on the same day you finish writing it you pass by an old bookstore and the draft slips from your messenger bag unnoticed. The store's owner finds it and decides to put it on the shelves. This is the same notepad you stumbled upon all those years ago. In this scenario the loop itself dictates the sequence of events leaving no room for alternative choices or deviations from the course of events. Some paradoxes in self. Consistent universes allow closed causal loops to preserve the timeline while others create separate but similar alternative worlds to avoid a logical contradiction. This is called a multiverse. So, let's revisit the same situation with the bookstore and the notepad. Upon rediscovering it you notice a peculiar sentence written in your own handwriting it was all for nothing. 
In a rush you scribble down a new idea to break the chain and the book slips out of your bag once more. However this time, someone else picks it up. This tiny alteration might birth a new universe a fresh timeline set apart from the loop you were caught in before. If time travel were possible the sole immutable rule would be the preservation of causality. The result of any action would be balanced, so paradoxes like the grandfather paradox would always find a way to sort themselves out. In self-consistent universes, the so-called time cops the entities in charge of safeguarding the logical consistency of the timeline would prevent a time traveler from changing anything. While in a multiverse all the events would occur in a new timeline ensuring no inconsistencies arise. So no matter where you are in the end one conclusion becomes inescapable paradoxes are impossible. We still have no idea if any of these theories will ever be supported by data but to a human mind time travel will always remain one of the most exciting and fascinating possibilities. Who knows maybe in a very distant future someone will look back at us and smile while reading this.